Welcome everyone to church this morning where I am in my tennis shoes and we've got a Freedom's Fun Day today. So as I watch the news, I see all the men, they get to wear their suits and tennis shoes. And then I look at the women on the news and they're in dresses and stilettos. And it's like, is that by choice or are they asked to do that? I don't know, but by choice, I'm wearing tennis shoes today just to carry us on through a long but hopefully really fun day today. So today we've got kind of a Pentecost theme, which Pentecost is way back closer to Easter, but we are remembering and we are um, going to kind of play around with that theme, hoping that we learn something from repeating some Things. We've got our people who are working for us madly downstairs, so thank you so much. Good thing we've got some daughters in town, huh? <laughs> so I welcome everyone in the sanctuary, in the sanctuary of the space that people are watching from. It's a couple of things that are coming up. Next week is World Communion Sunday, so somewhere, somewhere floating around is a sign-up sheet. We're hoping people bring bread from around the world, so if you'll... If you'll put it, if you think about French bread, German rye bread, you, we've done this for several years. So imagine Hawaiian bread that's not really from all around the world. And is it really from Hawaii? I don't know, but we like it here at Freedom's. So uh, just imagine some breads from around the world. If you don't know, put a question mark. And if it's something, um, a surprise, we like that too. We have a lot of fun with World Communion Sunday. Then the next four weeks, we're starting a new series. And I'm just going to give you a hint that we're going to be playing with Play-Doh a lot. We're going to have some creative uh, outlets in there. Debbie Schipple, you should have some fun with that. So everyone at home, I encourage you to get a jar of Play-Doh. If you haven't bought Play-Doh or had it in your home for a while, now's a good time. If you're out and about, just grab one and have it ready for us. That will start the second week in October. We're quickly moving as we plan through all the way to Advent. So October we have a series, and then in November we have things like All Saints Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Sunday. Boom, the next Sunday's Advent. The year is just flying by. So this is the last of our series, Cup of Freedom. Everyone is encouraged to take your cup home if you brought it. You should have a little surprise in there, uh, a, a tea bag, to remember our experience here and to think about what we've been doing. I also encourage everyone, if you haven't uh, helped the youth have made these candles with our, our china from downstairs, and the, all the money that we raise with that helps go to Irvington Grade School Mission, which is Peace Camp and the Backpack Program. So as we move into the last day of our Cup of Freedom series and we focus on the freedom to be filled. It's a Pentecost-like celebration where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift given to us, the disciples of Jesus and to the church was complete with the spaghetti luncheon hosted by the church council right after church. I like it because spaghetti has a bit of the color red in it. So that kind of keeps going. Everybody's invited to go to that. Um, the birthday of the church is celebrated on this Pentecost day, even though we know it's not really Pentecost. But we're going to celebrate it again and again when the gift of the Spirit is given to us. The presence of Christ through the breath of the Spirit is always real. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of that. So as we turn to see each other, to know each other, to spend time with each other today as beloved children of God, the body of Christ, let us sing the song, We Are the Church.
and that song just always brings a smile to my face, especially when they stumble over a word or two. It's a Pentecost-like moment. So we remember that story where just cacophony was happening all around, and that happens here with us as well. I'm encouraging you all to think about what have changed with you in these last seven weeks. We've kind of been encouraging uh, behavior changes, if you will. And I'm thinking that often we talk about all of this in church or our worship, and we forget the moment we walk through the doors, going out to our cars or our homes. We talk about it here, we practice it here, we don't do it perfectly, but when we go out, life distracts. Have we done anything to change ourselves? Has God's Word done anything to change our hearts? Change, you see, is a process of trial and error. It doesn't just happen. There's no magic prayer and we'll be changed. We have to keep practicing it. One step forward, two steps back, two steps forward. And even if we haven't arrived today at the place we imagined a few weeks ago, even if we haven't met our goals perfectly, today we rejoice in the truth that we are filled anew with God's grace and God's glory. We invite the Holy Spirit to come into our midst as we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Like a wind, you rush through us. It is through you that we find life and are awakened with the knowledge that by you we are created. We are born and we have breath. Let us pray, breathe on me, breath of God. present. Spirit, you give life to this form we call humanity, and it is through you that we each make our unique impression upon the world. Even when all is still, you make your presence known. The choir is going to sing under while I invite you to say the prayer that will come on the screen. So it's going to be different sounds. I create through you. God, I have strength. You enable me to press on in the face of difficulty. We are often challenged to become even more than we could dream. And we are aware of the importance of each small step. So sustain us, creator, giver of life, strength, joy, and presence. Free us to be all that you would have us be. Our scripture reading comes from Acts 2, 
verses 3 to 4. Stephanie, do you want to read that? Are you okay with it? I've got it open. Or I had it open. I lost my Bible. Where did it go? I'll pop it for you. I got it. Sorry about that. It's just two little verses. But it's good to hear a different voice. I thought I had it up there. Where'd my Bible go? It's not marked. It's in Acts. Here, you pop into that while I start. Acts 2, 3 through 4, as she's looking for that. In Acts, we find Jesus' disciples. And they're with a larger group of his followers are gathered together. All Jerusalem is about to celebrate one of the Jewish festivals. It's the festivals of first fruits. Look, Aaron helped us out right there. Okay. Okay, three and four. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks. So the festival of first fruits I find quite interesting. If you think about that, offering to God the first fruits of that which we harvest or that which we have been given, not what's left over, but the first fruits. So the Jewish people gathered every year for the festival of first fruits. And that festival is 50 days after Passover and the wheat harvest is being gathered. So imagine with me, since we're about to enter our own harvest, right? Mark Mitchell got busted in the mouth getting ready for it. (laughs) It's a dangerous time. So here we are in the same kind of place. The crops that are sown are not being harvested. And this is the time of thanksgiving to God for the harvest. So they're ready to go. So imagine with me, it was only 50 days earlier that Jesus had been in Jerusalem celebrating Passover. He's with his disciples shortly after what happens. He's arrested crucified on the cross, dies. Three days after that, he's raised from the dead. Then there are 40 days when Jesus appears and speaks of the kingdom of God and how he's taken up into heaven. And there are still a few days until the celebration of first fruits. That's a celebration that fills Jerusalem with people from all over, people who come to celebrate the harvest celebration to offer first fruits. Yet the disciples and followers of Jesus must have felt a bit down and discouraged. Jesus was no longer physically with them. Their leader is gone, and yet they're not without hope, for Jesus was not dead. They have seen that. He is alive. The tomb is empty. It had been more than a week that Jesus was gone and still nothing. They felt all alone. Remember, they thought that second coming was right away. They wanted Jesus with them now. And soon they're supposed to celebrate with Thanksgiving, this harvest of first fruits, yet God had something else in mind. We read, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of violent wind from the heavens comes and fills the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. 
and the people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were praising God and giving God glory in a language that all could understand. Thanking God for the wonders of the harvest. And the Holy Spirit was bringing everyone together. And people could hardly understand how this was possible. Some people even tried to explain it away by saying they were drunk. Persevere regardless of what others say. Today, the message of God is shared. We hear it verbally. We hear it by word of mouth from family or friends. We read it in books. We hear it in music. We hear it on the radio, on the TV. We see it on social media, often used and abused in different ways and even in politics. But the story of Pentecost teaches us the importance of focusing on God. Just the other day, I had a young woman, she's been to church here several times, Alicia Woodward. She writes a blog. And she came up to me because I shared the blog, I think, and some of you had read it. And she said, thank you for sharing that. And she said, what I noticed was that blog offended some people. Sometimes people want to use religion or the word of God and twist it into some political thing, which I can't say that Jesus was not political. He was pushing back against injustice in the Roman Empire. But when you come down to the core of it, Alicia was preaching just what we preach she was writing eloquently that we should love. We should love God and our neighbors. Even when we don't agree, we are called to love. All those voices speaking and talking and people could understand, oh, if only that would happen now. There's lots of voices going on, and we don't seem to understand each other. I don't understand it. But if we come about caring for each other through that essence of love and know that God is indeed with us, and it's not just us white folk Christians, God is with the world working toward good things, but we are called to engage and participate. So the people there were thanking God for harvest and for all good things. What was a wheat harvest celebration now becomes a day of celebration, a day of celebrating for all people, a day when the church was born. And we're supposed to be living examples of the grace, mercy, and forgiveness of God. Sometimes we have to start with ourselves. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves for whatever it is we need to forgive ourselves for in order to move forward and to love the other. We are supposed to protest against injustice and I wonder, and I ask, what stirs your imagination? Do you really believe that God is real and we are not alone? Mark, there's a guy called Mark Van Steenwick who shares a story that his young son taught him after Easter. I think Aaron's got that for us. Let's watch his story. You never know with technology. Is he not going to pop up right? It's stressful in the sound room when you're alone and there's a glitch. As soon as church is over, it will work just fine. 
He shares a story about his son, his little boy, who tells him not long after Easter that God isn't alive, that he doesn't see God in the community, which stirs dad's, you know, wonderings and thoughts, what that mean. And his son has heard a protest march. He said, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, right? We're going to sing that song, even though it's not Easter. We should be celebrating that, that God is indeed alive and start looking for where God is alive in our community. I mean, we started a second food pantry. That's a big sign of God being alive. You all made it here today, safe and sound. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, right? Let's start looking for that. The other day I saw a monarch butterfly flying by and I turned and as it's getting cold, there goes this hummingbird. Signs of life. The monarch butterfly is our state butterfly and is endangered. We keep bubbling up and talking about milkweed and some of us are trying to plant more milkweed or save the milkweed where it is planted. And then you see a monarch butterfly. There is hope even when we see on the news that there is no hope. Does this mean you got that working? No, it's broken. Oh. <laughs> we'll just look at Mark. Hey, Mark. All right, we'll see if it'll move on. So Pentecost, that's a Pentecost spirit where we celebrate Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed because Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. He sends it to fill and equip each of us, the children, to us older people, calling us to work, to gather, to rise up against injustice. And people need to hear the love, the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God. Sometimes that means we need to rise up. People need to hear that healing is possible. They need to hear our stories. We've all been given gifts and talents by God to minister and to bring revival to the land. This begins within our hearts and it begins with our lives. We're called to become living sanctuaries, to proclaim through our actions that God is alive and the Holy Spirit is moving around and within us. People need to hear that God is alive and forgiveness is possible. We need to live it out, that healing is possible. Renewed relationships are possible. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to give us the boldness to share our faith and to live into our faith. The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the workers are few. That is so true wherever we go throughout the world, right? The community, we can't find workers. Well, that's looking out at others. Maybe we need to look in the mirror and see where we are called to be the workers in God's field. We need to learn to pray in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. For Christ the Lord is risen today, and that, my friends, is very good news. For we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we can, in the name of Christ, do wonderful things. So I invite you to stand as you are able, and let's sing that Easter song that we know, Christ the Lord is risen today.
us pray. God, we pray that you may embolden us to be bold in our belief, bold in our action, bold in our faith to reach out and touch another life, to learn from our Holy Scripture, learn from each other, learn from the earth, for we are risen people, children of the risen Christ, gifted to heal, love, and touch each other, gifted to offer grace and compassion to a hurting world, gifted to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. May we take seriously the price paid to receive this gift, and may we be emboldened to share it. As we share our joys and concerns, let us do so by trusting that you are indeed with us and within us. Amen. You may be seated. There is so much going on around the world that I think we need to pray for. And there's things that are going on just right here within our lives. So do we have joys and concerns that we would like to share? And I invite you to think if you watch the news, what is bubbling up? What do we need to lift up uh, throughout the world that needs to be heard and shared? No joys, no concerns. We're glad to have you guys back. That's a joy. <laughs> yep. The Dillias and the Beck Myers were off gallivanting across the country, so they went to California and back, and we're glad to have you back. And we thank God that Keith, he had some big shoes to fill, and he led us forward, so thank you, Keith. Um, the hurricane in the Gulf that's de been developing and headed toward Florida in that area? Yeah. That's something to be concerned about a yep. little bit. Hurricane had, that has already devastated Puerto Rico. Um, which is part of us. Now it's headed to Florida. Yep. There's a different one that hit Canada and um, what was it? Like half a million people have been affected by that. They've never had hurricane-like situation in Canada before, but the warming of the waters is what feeds the hurricanes. And so Canada was indeed hit. Yep. Puerto Rico, Florida, Nova Scotia in Canada. I heard on the news, South Korea, Ukraine, an American ship is in South Korea doing some war practices, which of course you know is ticking off North Korea, though we pray for South Korea. Ukraine, uh, where they've got voting going on from the Russians in there that um, Ukraine says is not legit. And uh, I saw on the news where they had armed guards going as they took ballots to people's houses. So how about voting under those conditions? Yeah. Africa, of course, we continue to lift up in prayer. Sri Lanka. The women in Iran, oh my gosh, have you noticed any of that? Things that are going on. A woman was killed. She was arrested by the, what do they call that? Like kind of the modesty police or whatever you're supposed to dress. What is it? Yeah. So. Um, women are rising up there. We pray for that because you know that's a dangerous situation. Men are protesting in Russia uh, about being called to be forced into war. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world that we are not alone and we need to support them with our prayer. Uh, God hears and I believe God is working for the good of all things, but it is tough. Stephanie. With cancer, uh, and then he went to the surgeon Friday to possibly see what they can do with it. It's a couple different places, so right. younger than myself or whatever. So um, we definitely hold Brian in our prayers. Okay. Noel Claiborne called me yesterday, and I did pass out some addresses. I'm hoping we can get a card writing mm -hmm. campaign. If you need some, I've got a lot more up here with some addresses of Howard. Um, Bill and Polly, Reed's new address, Reed Lampy's, and um, Noel Claiborne called. He is having his knee surgery on Tuesday. So uh, Mark and I are going to go up and visit on Monday. Then he'll have the surgery on Tuesday and hopefully recuperate at Green Tree. And his plan is to get home. So we need to lift Noel up in prayer. And I'll keep putting that up as well. Becky saying anything on there? I don't know. If she, okay. 
uh, yeah, Becky said prayers for Florida. And um, the uh, woman in charge of the boys after school program, uh, Nicole Brown, she's having some neck fusion surgery Okay. Uh, on Wednesday. Um, it's to help her with some chronic pain that she's got a, a, a Chiari, I think is what it's so called. So Nicole on Wednesday. So she suffers from chronic pain. So yeah, she's having surgery Wednesday. She's gonna be out six, seven weeks. So she's got the assistance and everybody she needs at the place to keep the after school program going but yes use prayer. after school programs are important we've got birthdays we should have put uh, Rick and Charlene Griffith on that so I'll update that um, card mailing list Charlene's birthday is this week Michael Tiemann's is this week and Reed Lampy's birthday is this week no one's here, but we lift that up. None of those people are here. So we lift them up in prayer and celebration. Other joys and concerns. Don't forget the bake sale is for Dubois. All that needs to be here next week um, at 930. And Sandy, you can deliver it to her house if you need to deliver it earlier. And we'll be asking for someone to please uh, be able to drive that out there and deliver that. See my notes? I think I already mentioned the cups. Everybody take your cup of blessing home. And then let us turn to God in prayer. Lord God, we have a page full of prayers. You have rolls and rolls and rolls of prayers. And we are so glad that you are with us always a step ahead, always in the midst of it. God, we do pray for peace. We pray for the wisdom to know what we can do to help bring that about. We pray for healing, for safe surgeries, for Nicole and Noel, for healing for Brian and Howard, for many more birthdays for Reed and Charlene and Michael. God, we pray for this church that we might see and be a revival, that we become empowered by the Holy Spirit that blows through us, that we reach out and invite others in, that we call and we notice who is not here. God, help us be the church outside these doors as well as inside. Help us be the children of God in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. As we offer our gifts back to God, let us imagine. Imagine new ministries. Imagine new ways of being. Imagine giving of our first fruits. Let us give with joyful and open hearts in the way of Christ our Lord. God, we return these gifts to you. May you multiply them in blessing. May you bless us 
to travel along with these gifts to do your work. In the way of Christ our Lord, amen. We gather around the table the last time of this series. And in coming to the table with Jesus this day, we're witnesses to the resurrection. We have offered our gifts of money. We offer our work of service as a testimony to God's own glory in our commitment as disciples. We come knowing that God will bless our gifts to his work in the world and Christ reign here on earth where death is extorted and hope fills all of creation. So let us confess, saying, Jesus, our host, we yearn for your communion. We yearn to be filled. We yearn to meet you here. We see you inviting us, and yet we find ourselves stumbling on our way. Forgive us. Hear now in the silence the confessions of your people. We confess, but we hear the good news. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So in the name of the risen Christ, know that you are indeed forgiven. And in the name of the risen Christ, glory to God. Amen. So as forgiven, freed and risen people testifying to the joy of the resurrection, let's do it in action as you pass the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Okay, move. Peace. Yeah, peace of Christ be with you too. voices to speak of this great love. We lift them with joyful acclamation. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you living God. Time after time you draw us here to inspire us, to feed us, to save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here steadfast and true. For you created this world and called it good. You created us to proclaim our good to all. And so we raise our voices in praise saying, Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye made blind by sin, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee perfect in power, in love, and purity. We remember the life and ministry of Jesus. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He ate with sinners, praise the Lord, and preached forgiveness and peace. It was at this table that he issued the invitation to gather together, to share together, to remember together, and to go 
and do likewise in the world. So let us take the cup of freedom and call on the name of God. this day of resurrection celebration, we raise our voices to proclaim the timeless truth. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is with us now. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, your people, and on the gifts of bread and cup, and on the gifts we return to you. Make us lovers and tellers of your word. Make us healers and givers of your grace. And make us one body in Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and for all time. Amen. the ushers to please come forward. The table is ready. If you'll take the piece of bread and hold it until all have been served. Yep. Yep.
body of Christ, when you take this in, be transformed to be like him. Blood of Christ. Let us pray. Mm, glorious God, you have given us the gifts to follow you. You have given us this ritual of bread and wine offering us your body and your lifeblood to be changed. You've given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to breathe into us, calling us ever closer to you. We share the gifts you have so generously given us with others. Help us do it even more. Gifts of song and dance, love and care. Gifts of money to be multiplied by joining with others. And we trust, oh God, we trust you continue to bless us that we may bless others through our work together in this community. We have sent you this day. Now send us out into the world to spread the good news. For we proclaim God is good. All the time. And all the time. Now let us go, knowing that we are blessed. And may you be a blessing to others this week. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. I hope you all will stay and join us with a meal and with the time to get ever closer together. Let us go in peace.